We had a request from an advisor during the week to cover gold in this week's episode. And you can understand why. Since the beginning of the year, gold has performed really strongly uh, and it's up somewhere around 10% year to date, following a, a relatively flat performance in 2022. But as we speak, it's hovering not far off its all-time high of just over $2,000 per ounce. Guillaume, let's kick things off um, with what's been driving gold's stellar performance this year? Uh, hi, Peter. Yeah, as always with gold, uh, it's really what I, what's happening to the US dollar is going to matter for gold. Like most commodities, it's priced in US dollars. So if the dollar falls, mechanically, the value of gold will increase. Uh, and this has actually p- provided much of the performance we've seen this year. Uh, but, you know, obviously, we've seen things like the bank- banking concerns in the US and Europe last month. Uh, that's the sort of event that will cause the demand for gold to rise. You know, when, when there's concerns around the financial sectors, investors are rushing to safe assets like gold, you know, arguably safer than having your money sitting in a US regional bank, I guess. Okay, so safe haven asset, um, that's fine. But for me, gold is kind of a strange asset uh, to get my to get my head around. It's basically an, an unproductive asset. Uh, so unlike stocks or bonds or deposits where a yield is generated, gold doesn't produce any income. In other words, a pile of gold will stay the same pile of gold no matter how much time passes. So what actual uses does this shiny yellow metal substance have? Um, yes, yeah, so that's a good question, Peter, and, and I can sense a bit of scepticism here, but <laughs> yeah, you're right. Gold produces no dividend, no yield, doesn't really contribute to, to economic growth in that, th- in that sense. Uh, so really, the value really depends on, on, on the belief that someone will pay more for it eventually. Um, so, but if you look at actually demand for gold, half of the world demands last year was for jewelry. Uh, and the rest really is demand via bullions and coins, and that's really coming from investors, but also central banks around the world. Central banks are a very big player in the gold market, uh, and because they see it really as an alternative to the US dollar, uh, as a global currency reserve. Uh, so it's really used as a form of money. Uh, and we've seen, like, we had reports of central banks, uh, like China, for example, having increased their gold reserve quite significantly over the last few months which is understandable given that the tense kind of geopolitical context where you can understand why some countries might seek an alternative to the US dollar here. Okay. But it's, it's key to remember it's, it's a finite resource. Um, so if demand continues to rise, you know, prices are likely to rise over time. Okay, so I mean, even that timing of the, of the rise in, in value of gold is is still surprising in a sense. Gold is often thought kind of as this, it's like a, a protection against inflation which is now receding and it offers no yield. So should be getting more competition from the likes of government bonds, given the rise in interest rates we've seen. Uh, so why, my, my, my question is, why buy gold now when you can get sort of a, a three or 4% yield on some safe government bond or, or even cash? Yeah, you know, that, that's fair. I mean, gold has history being sought as a hedge against inflation. Uh, but you, when you look back over time, this is actually true of a longer time period. And it's true that now in the short term, uh, interest rate doesn't really favor gold. Uh, yeah. You know, no regular income, so potentially less attractive. But, you know, at the same time, we're getting close to the end of that uh, rate hiking cycle. Um, economic activity is showing signs of slowing. There's going fears of recession. So actually, from that perspective, gold is actually getting less competition from fixed income, you know, as, as another defensive asset, if you like. Okay, okay. So one of the other bits that I touched on was obviously it doesn't produce an income or yield. So why do investors use it? Is it purely due to, you know, that whole element of fear, uh, that diversifying element in times of stress, that hedge against inflation? Yeah, I'd say gold really is the ultimate diversifier. You know, when you fear that, all the other asset classes are going to lose value. Um, and as we said, you know, timing a gold allocation in the short term is difficult uh, because there's, there's so many different drivers. But I would say it has a place in the multi-asset portfolio really as a diversifier. Uh, but, you know, you have to remember, you know, gold is definitely not a one-way ticket. You know, if you look between 2011 and 2015, it fell close to 50%. So, right. you know, 
investor need to be aware that it can and, and it does fall during certain periods. Okay, that's really interesting. Gold, I think I'll take that one line from you. Gold is the, the ultimate diversifier. Um, and on that note, it's a great place for us to finish. Um, Guillaume, as always, thanks for your thoughts on this. I find this whole topic really, really interesting. Um, thank you all for watching and we'll be back again next week uh, with another topic that's quarter eye.